Okay, my mic is now on. The, the United States of America is a country that has gone through many ups and downs. And uh, we, can, we can talk about that, but right now we are going to be ranking its valiant, noble, wonderful leaders throughout history. So... Uh, I have the tiers here, first of all. Uh, l let me get something straight. They're all in hell. They're all in hell, except one. They're all in hell except one. And that one is Mr. Theodore Roosevelt. These aren't in order, but I'm going to try to present them in order. Theodore Roosevelt, he might not actually be dead. Uh, there are legends that say that He's still up there in the Dakotas leading groups of Boy Scouts around looking for, for cool rocks and such. So, let's get started. First, I'm going to change the input device of my camera because my camera is not on. Uh, video capture, USB, nope, that's the wrong thing. USB, okay. Nope, that's too big. That's my forehead. Uh, I'm going to read chat in a sec before we get started here. All right, chat, what do you got for me? Theodore Roosevelt supported eugenics. Okay, look, we're going to have to overlook some things, but believe me, I, I, know, I know a little bit about the presidents. So we, we can dig. Let's dig up some dirty laundry. Chat, if you want to dig up some dirty laundry, I'll have a... All the tab open for dirty laundry. He hunted animals. All right. Okay. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. General turned president George Washington. He has a painting. Uh, where are you, George Washington? Oh, there he is at the bottom. So Washington... I, I made a new category for people like him. My camera's frozen. My camera's frozen. This is the greatest stream ever. You know, I thought I was going to be able to upload this later, but maybe not actually. Okay, here we go. George Washington. I made an, a different tier for his type, and it is well-meaning slave owner. Slave owners are all in hell. That goes without, without saying. Uh, but some of them, you know, had had some policies that, you know, maybe maybe they tried to, to remedy their own evils of slavery. Maybe these guys just felt bad for owning and mistreating other humans. So they're like, oh, let's do some other things. George Washington, uh, a fine general. As far as military dictators go, he's not the worst in world history. What about sex slaves? I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a source on the on the sex slave thing, um, but even though chattel slavery ended uh, about the turn of the century fully, uh, yeah, there there are presidents who were able to skirt around that, whether it be with uh, sex slaves, traffic trafficked humans, uh, and, and I'm sure we'll uncover some of that as the list goes on. But next is the second president, John Adams. Now. Adams didn't own slaves himself. He lived in Massachusetts. He was a lawyer, and he was he was pretty instrumental in giving us the United States. Uh, you may, if you're an older subscriber of my channel from about August, you might remember John Adams appeared in some of my videos. You know, I have the voice. I am John Adams. For ten years, King George and his car and his Parliament have gulled, collied, and diddled these colonies with their illegal taxes. That's John Adams. So, well-meaning guy, not a slave owner, but he was so annoying. He's annoying, fat little man. If he was alive today, he would be that kid in school that like shows up in a in a suit and tie, you know, to like debate blue hair girls. So he's moderately evil, right? A bad president, but meant well. The third president did not mean well. He is the first one to reach our lowest 
Circle of Hell, he was not only a slave owner, he was a horrible person too, which makes him a horrible slave owner. So right now, already, George Washington, well-meaning slave owner. John Adams, didn't own slaves, bit annoying, bit grating. Thomas Jefferson, awful. Speaking of Virginians, uh, James Madison. James Madison, notable for losing the War of 1812 and blackmailing Alexander Hamilton and uh, generally being in league with Jefferson on a lot of not-so-great things. So we're going to have him in the horrible slave owner tier. Let's keep going with guys from Virginia. James Monroe. I'll actually have to Google if James Monroe was a slave owner. James Monroe's slaves. 49 enslaved individuals. That's not great. Uh, James Monroe. Let's look up his policies. So he's either a well-meaning slave owner or a, a non... Okay, Monroe Doctrine. European countries can't uh, interfere with the Western Hemisphere. And then shortly after that, you know, Brazil gained independence and then Gran Colombia a few years after that. So it's fine. Uh, mainly known for his foreign policy. He had to pick up a lot of scraps from uh, Madison. What is he? Oh, the negotiation. Oh, he was a diplomat negotiating... Negoti- negotiating uh, the Louisiana Purchase. I'm going to put him in the in the well-meaning slave owner tier. He was he was a Virginian, which kind of, you know, docks that. 49 was a low number back then. He owned people! He's in hell, but he's fine. Well-meaning, well-meaning slave owner. All right. That brings us to our sixth president, a, a nepotism baby who stole the presidency, John... Quincy Adams. Like his father, I, I'm tempted to put him in the moderately evil tier. But I want to look up his policies to see if any of them hold up today. John Quincy Adams policies. Uh, a canal. Probably the uh, the Erie Canal. Okay. Uh, internal improvements, roads and canals. Infrastructure. Uh, The American system, uh, this was around mill times when um, milling uh, villages, you know, in Massachusetts, New York, those propped up. You know what, he's a a well-meaning slave owner, which, no, not a slave owner, sorry, Uh, moderately evil. I don't think he was a slave owner. All right, number seven, oh boy. (laughs) It doesn't get worse than this guy. In fact, I I might need to add a row below for the seventh president of the United States. Please, please. Oh, did it add too many? Oh, it added too many. Delete row. Delete row. Who knows who the the seventh president is? I'll get. I'll let you guess. Andrew <laughs> Jackson. So I visited Andrew Jackson's house in Tennessee and at Hermitage in it's he lived around Nashville they kind of uh gloss over a little bit of his bad stuff you know they glorify it it was his house it's his house they uh they kind of you know make him appear a little better than he actually was but that's not saying much because they still have to cover his policies which included Indian exclusion you know, expansion of slavery into new states, uh, generally being a, one of the things he did. I Was he the cheese wheel guy? Did he leave the, the cheese wheel in the White House? Because I got to uh, we're going to do some research. We are historians here. Andrew Jackson cheese block. Yep, an interesting gift, a 1,400-pound cheese Jackson left in the entrance hall of the White House. So the entire White House smelled like cheese. He, I hope he's being tortured for all of eternity. Genuinely, that, that is, uh, that's quite bad on its own. Come on, man, clean, clean up your cheese. He had a rowdy, 
uh, party in, in the White House after his inauguration that I'm sure was just a riot uh, by, by today's standards. Not excellent. He does have his own place in hell, Cam Eddy. All right, Martin Van Buren. His first language was not English. His first language was Dutch. So that gives him some points in my book. It just not being English. So did Martin Van Buren own slaves? The big million dollar question. I'm sure this has been heavily documented. He owned at least one enslaved person. Oh, no. He hired out enslaved and, ple and freed African Americans to work at the Decatur House. Probably about its time in Albany. Ooh, what do we do here? What do, what do we do here with Martin Van Buren? I'd like to give this to chat. Is he a slave owner? He believed the Constitution exempted black people from its protection. He didn't believe black people were people. But he considered slavery morally wrong, but sanctioned by the Constitution. That's not good enough. Come on. Ugh. And the panic. Oh, my God. Mm. Well-meaning slave owner. That, come on. Hey, Tom. Tom, you you love this stream. This is for your type of person. The ninth president was William Henry Harrison. He was president for only a month. He didn't get to do anything terrible, so we'll have to judge him on his past, which I, I usually try to shy away from. Here's John Tyler. He's going to be on deck, so I put him here. No, that's William Henry Harrison. This is John Tyler. Okay. William Henry Harrison. Slaves. We're going to have to do this with a lot of these guys. He opposed slavery. He's from Ohio. He said, I am accused of being friendly to slavery from my earliest youth to the present moment. I have been an ardent friend of human liberty. So probably not a slave owner. So what's he best known for? Dying a month into his presidency. All right. Uh. We'll put him in the moderately evil tier with the Adamses. Some similarly ineffective and annoying northerners. Okay, and then, <laughs> unfortunately, the next president was John Tyler, who I'm pretty sure definitely owned slaves. Of course, Tippecanoe and Tyler too was that campaign slogan. He was a prominent slave owner. <laughs> so what were his policies? He was not buried under the American flag. That, that raises some questions. He was a lawyer. Oh, another Virginian. Who let them do this? Who let Virginia own the country for the first 10 presidents? <laughs> There, most people lived, did most people not live in the North? Was Virginia a center of development for the first, what, 50 years of America? I can't believe this. Some people thought he lacked the claim to the position, but then he just took it, uh, which started the president, that the vice president took over the president. Uh, Florida became a new state, okay? Um... Texas was its own country. He was not picked again to run for president. Uh, they called him his accidency. Ah, oh, well, I feel kind of bad. Virginia was a massive state. Mm -hmm. He angered his own party. He picked people from the Democratic Party to work in the government. What a surprise. The slave owner... Uh, prominent slave owner chose the prominent slave owners in the prominent slave holding party to work in the White House. 
So we're going to throw him in with the horrible slave owners. I, I can't find a well-meaning thing about him. But the next president is Mr. James Knox Polk. By the way, he was photographed. So we'll, we'll get, be getting into presidents who have been photographed, which is good. Hopefully less Virginians. God. Uh, Virginia's next to D.C. Yes, I, I know that for a fact because I am from Maryland, a state which has not produced a single president despite being around since the early 1600s. Delaware produced a president before Maryland. How? All right. Uh, James K. Polk. Was he a slave owner? Uh, so James Polk was one of the biggest expansionist presidents ever. Polk secretly purchased enslaved people. He used slave labor at the White House, which was, I guess, standard. He secretly purchased enslaved people for himself. And probably publicly disavowed it. 56 of them. But was he well-meaning? Yeah, he was literally like a child trafficker. Secretly per secretly purchasing slave children and separating them from their families? That is bonkers. Uh, but was he well-meaning? What were his policies? A workaholic. <laughs> Ambitious agenda. Cut tariffs, reestablish an independent treasury, secure Oregon. <sighs> All right, here we go. First poll. Was James K. Polk a gen Why am I asking you this? You guys, like, follow for YouTube commentaries. I don't, I don't expect you to be experts on presidents. But I'm going to ask you anyway. Here we go. Here is the poll. And I know it doesn't show you guys the poll as it's polling. Didn't he threaten Mexico so he can take the West? Probably. Didn't he play Garfield Kart? <laughs> so, so far we have 71% say he was well-meaning. How's the stream doing? Bad. It's fine. Uh... 80% no. <laughs> Do we not like California? Right now it's 72% no. 28% yes. Okay. Manifest destiny. All right. In the, we're talking about hell here. In the, in the grand scheme, when, when you're at the pearly gates and God judges you, he says, oh, you wanted to expand America? You wanted to steal land? That's not good. That's bad. So we're going to say he was a, a horrible slave owner. <laughs> Which probably going to be most of these guys. That brings us to another horrible slave owner. Zachary Taylor, where are you? Yep, look at that face. His daughter actually dated Robert E. Lee for a bit. Um, so imagine your girlfriend's dad is the president. And even even further than that, imagine uh, you are Robert E. Lee. So we're going to power through these guys. Did Millard Fillmore own slaves? Oh, wait, we're getting into some really bad people because there's a civil war coming up. A post slavery but signed the fugitive slave law. Okay. Oh, oh, but he had a reason. He had a reason. The South would secede if if we oh if we sign the fugitive slave law, the South would secede. Oh they did that anyway. He was a Whig. Did he own slaves himself? I'm sure that had a uh Hmm. All right, control F, 
slaves. How many? Just give me a number. I don't need to see this. Give me a number. Early life, personal life. Well, maybe we could tell where is he from? Oh, he's from New York. He's from the Finger Lakes. Okay. Well, he's a horrible person for overseeing the fall of America, partly. But it is moderately evil. <laughs> Notice how all the moderately evil guys were like bad presidents. But then the guys who you'd consider good presidents are, are worse. Maybe that'll uh, be a sign of what's to come. New Yorker. Yes. All right. Speaking of the decline of America, the next guy is Franklin Pierce, who oversaw the continued decline of America. I'm going to start going to Wikipedia, because at this point you can kind of tell if a person owns slaves or not based on where they're from. He's from Hillsborough, New Hampshire. I'm sure he's one of the most famous people from New Hampshire. No, this is government propaganda. Give me Wikipedia, an independent news source. He signed the Kansas-Nebraska Act. He believed that the abolitionist movement was a threat to the unit. Oh, oh, we need unity. Oh, we need, we can't be anti-slavery. That alienates slave owners. Look, we need unity. His hair saw, his hair wasn't that bad back then. And then it got worse. And then it got worse. Here he, he's doing the Napoleon pose. All these leaders from the time used to do that, that tucked in shirt Napoleon pose to, to look strong. He was not strong at all. The country was bad. Was he a Democrat? Democrats from this era, yeah. Democrats from this era were not great, but he was not a slave owner. But was he just a horrible person? I'm not gonna say he's a horrible person. Maybe if he got to serve two terms, he'd be a horrible person. But thankfully, he was voted out for a much stronger... Guys, America's falling apart right now. It's the mid-1800s. We need a strong leader. We need, a, we need the fist of justice. We need a fist. So here's James Buchanan. <laughs> a president remembered, of course, for being such an effective leader. Actually, he is remembered for not having any wife or... Uh, Thomas Jefferson had made his sister the first lady, which is problematic for different reasons. Uh, but he didn't have a, a first lady at all. There are rumors that he was gay. Now, these are just rumors. But obviously, if, if he was gay at the time, no one he wouldn't be able to tell anyone. He was the Secretary of State. He represented Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, not bad. He was an advocate. Oh, let Let's learn to read some code here. States' rights. What does states' rights mean? In this case, in any case. What does states' rights mean? It means pro-slavery. Or I guess nowadays it would be pro-life. Uh, to say, leave it up to the states. Uh, but he defeated Franklin Pierce. Congratulations. Oh, wasn't this election really split? Oh, no, his running mate was Breckenridge? Was he a... What's his, what party? What is your party affiliation? Uh, he went to Dickinson. Not That's a Pennsylvania school. Minister to Russia. Minister to the United Kingdom. Okay. But was he a Democrat? Oh, he allied. He was a contender for the Democrats. Northern Democrats, Democrat. Okay. I didn't. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to put a moderately evil. I don't think uh, we need a gay president today. Yes, we did. Did you miss much? No, because the next president is a guy who's not actually that bad. It's Abraham Lincoln. He, all right, we're going to evoke this category because there are some presidents where, uh, you know, while they're running, Americans look at them and say, 
That's an approachable guy. That's a nice guy. I, I could grab a beer with that guy. I want to grab a beer with him. Yes, Americans, this is true. People make their decision about who they want to be the commander in chief of the largest military in the world based on if they want to grab a beer with the guy. That's a real thing Americans do. So you could grab a beer with him. We, we hopefully will be using this tier a lot more. It's a nice tier. I want to, I want to put more people in this tier. He's a six foot five lawyer and former wrestler, which president would win in a bar fight, uh, Teddy, but Abe Lincoln wrestler, lawyer, debater, master debater, actually. So he's pretty good. And then unfortunately he died. And we got a very, very awful president next. <laughs> we have the next horrible slave owner, Andrew Johnson, who rolled back a lot of the great work that Lincoln did unifying the country and essentially made a, tried his best to revert America back to a slave state. I don't even need to look up this guy. Andrew Johnson is bad. And then next we have Ulysses S. Grant. So he was an alcoholic and he probably he had whiskey for breakfast and lunch and dinner due to him being an alcoholic. He was a great general, though. Not a, not a bad president. Definitely after <laughs> after a few years of Johnson, the first ever impeached president, uh, it was probably refreshing to have a, the great unifier Ulysses S. Grant. So it said he owned one slave, but I'm, I'm going to, I'll waive that because he was like a union general and they were pretty anti-slavery. I'm going to, let's see, he's moderately evil. He, he dealt with a lot of personal stuff. In fact, his memoir, in his memoir, he describes having cancer and it's such a vivid and gruesome description that a lot of medical students are required to read his autobiography just for that. You're waiting for JFK? Well, wait a little bit longer. So that was the 16th, 17th, 18th president. We're going to go to the 19th president, Rutherford B. Hayes. So in order to get elected, Rutherford B. Hayes of, I believe, Ohio. Let me just to find out if he had slaves. So Rutherford B. Hayes uh, made a deal with some Southerners or the South in general that repealed uh, Reconstruction. And repealing Reconstruction, you can watch Knowing Better's video on, on neo-slavery to get the full picture. It's a great video. But rolling back Reconstruction did irreparable damage to all of America that is very much still visible today. Law enforcement being racist, you know, redlining, all of this came from the rolling back of Reconstruction. Look at the South today. It's still, still racist. I don't know if he's a horrible person or a horrible slave owner. We'll have to see. I mean, owning slaves in America. He was a staunch abolitionist. Okay, so he's just a horrible person. Rutherford, guess what? We're past the Civil War. We can have just horrible people now. Not everyone's a slave owner. Awesome. Great. Thank Congratulations, Rutherford. And then James A. Garfield. So James A. Garfield is known a lot more for his assassination. And then when Alexander Graham Bell tried to make the x-ray machine to search for the bullet and went in there with his grubby hands and he died of an infection weeks later... Uh, but let's look at his policies. He could be a, maybe maybe a beer grabbing guy, Civil War general from Ohio. Now it's Ohio. It was Virginia before, and now it's Ohio. What's going on? What? It's literally political machines, and this guy looks exactly like the last guy. He agreed with radical Republican views. However, he preferred a, he preferred a more moderate approach. Um, Garfield's aptitude for mathematics extended to a notable proof of the Pythagorean theorem. That's pretty cool, actually. 
Garfield had not sought the White House. I don't think he sought anything. I really think he didn't want to be senator or president, representative, senator, president. Uh, he was he was a guy who got roped into all this and then he, he got assassinated. Really didn't deserve any of this. But was he even evil? I mean, I, I don't want to grab a beer with him. Maybe I do want to grab a beer with him. You know what? For he maybe he's an underrated guy. He he got he didn't deserve any of this really. So he'll be in beer grabbing territory, which leaves his vice president Chester A. Arthur. <laughs> what did this? Guy? Probably also from Ohio. What is at this point? Oh no, New York. Great, engineer in chief of the. Militia, Inspector General, Quartermaster of the Militia, 21st President. Arthur vetoed the Chinese Exclusion Act. Good. Good. Oh, but he signed a, a 10-year Chinese Exclusion Act. Okay, so he, he signed the, the Chinese Exclusion Act. All right. Not great. Not a great look. He shouldn't have even been president. He's probably a horrible person. But not a slave owner! He does look goofy. Okay, that was the 21st. We go to the 22nd. Who is also the 24th? It's Cleveland! From Ohio, I believe. He might have, like... Oh, what did he do? Oh, he was a Democrat. That's not good for this time. Because that means you're like pro-KKK. Actually, the KKK was around dead at this point. They only got brought back because of that movie, Birth of a Nation. Because everyone started LARPing after that movie became popular. Bad. Not good. So, what did he do as president? His first presidency... Because he had two presidencies. Oh, he appointed his friends. There were guys who did that worse. Modernized the Navy. Did some vetoes. Often <laughs> resorted to using veto power. Yeah, being a Democrat in an area where... Uh, a period of time when the Republicans pretty much had a, a good grip on power. Not great. Uh, I'm sure he did what he can. And he lost the presidency and then came back. I'm sure he's only moderately evil. He got really... If you look at a, a picture of him uh, in his first presidency versus his uh, second presidency, he got really fat. He got really, really fat. His name is funny. No, I'm not giving him beer tier. I'm reserving beer tier for guys that I actually want to grab a beer with. Okay. That'll mostly be guys who have a background in baseball, which is a surprising amount of them. Okay, in between the presidencies was actually Benjamin Harrison, a very underrated president who had a lot of policies that I agree with that if, they, if he was able to see through all of them in two terms, we'd be a very different country. But do I want to grab a beer with Benjamin Harrison? He's got to have some cool things about him. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna go to Google for this. Find some fun facts. Came from a famous family. Let's look at the we have this graphic. Who's in the Union Army lawyer? He was the centennial president. America's been around a hundred years at this point. Benjamin Harrison spoke up for civil rights. He had electricity in, uh, installed in the White House. The last president for have a for to have a full beard. Resolved party disputes. I think I'd like a beer with this gentleman. I, I'd like a. He overlooked wounded knee. Let me see about that. 
how he massacred 300 Lakota people. But did he, like, commission that? I can't find anything about Harrison. We're the president. So, Wounded Knee was unfortunate, um, but I don't think it should reflect on... Oh, bring his grandfather up? Oh, yeah, his grandfather was... Where is he? Did I put him... I don't even know where I put William Henry Harrison. Yeah, it was the guy who was in office for a month. That's his grandfather. Oh, there he is. Ah, he's right on... No. No. Yeah, yeah. Harrison. Harrison. There we go. thought that was different guy for a sec because these uh oh bring his grandfather up the list no look up wounded knee benjamin <sighs> can i just have a link because we i want to move on to some presidents that are uh, a little bit more recognizable if you know what i mean so after cleveland again at 24 we have the 25th President of the United States, William McKinley, who was murdered by an anarchist. This guy's from Ohio, isn't he? Uh, let me... Let me look this up real quick. Give you a black screen for a sec. Uh, give me that back. Okay. Uh, my search history is so messed up. Oh, William McKinley. So this was around the age of the gold standard debate at the turn of the century, which was a whole mess that I don't want to get into. <laughs> the last president to serve in the Civil War. Ohio. Great. Governor of Ohio, <laughs> U.S. House from Ohio. Okay, generally ranked as an above average president. Pro-business. Funny, he was pro-business and then his vice president was the famous trust buster. Oh, yeah. oh, I know what this guy was. He was the American empire guy. He was the mega imperialist. Ah, oh, that's not good. In the kingdom of heaven, you will be judged harshly. You will be sent down to hell for being an imperialist. Ah! He did saw stuff in the Caribbean and at Hawaii, Philippines. Name a place. You know, you wonder why America gets involved in, you know, places like Afghanistan, Iran, South America. It's it's this American Empire crap. Ugh. Teddy Roosevelt we already covered. Which brings us to 27, who I believe was Taft. So Taft... Uh, so Taft served a term and then fell out of favor with his party. Got stuck in a bathtub, but... He was a big baseball guy. Loved baseball. Had a gr This is a I think he was one of the first presidents where you can hear a voice recording of him. He had a very awesome sounding voice. I actually want to grab a beer with Taft. Didn't he support like tariffs though? I'll let that slide. I don't know if Satan judges that too harshly. But then we have a guy who I really want to put in this tier, but I don't think he technically owned slaves cuz it was illegal. Yeah, I'm sure he I'm sure he was a human trafficker. I'm sure he had like slaves of some sort. So he's just a horrible person. Uh yeah, he continued the American Empire stuff. He like I don't know if seceded the right word is the right word. He he left the League of Nations. He's so quite very bad. He showed birth of the nation, birth of a nation in the White House. That was when the KKK had the resurgence. He was a 
big supporter of the KKK. Looks like views have been going up over time somehow. Yeah. Okay, so we have crossed World War I, the point of no return, and I believe Harding is next with Coolidge. And then him. We just reorder some of these guys. So if you talk about messy affairs, this uh, this Warren G. Harding fellow had one of the messiest affairs uh, with his neighbor's wife, and he died of a heart attack. Actually, I don't think his cause of death is explicitly known. It was assumed he had a heart attack on vacation. Definitely not a beer guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him expressly evil either. The Teapot Dome scandal was when he gave his friends uh, appointments and then, yeah, he supported prohibition. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say he's a horrible person because I don't want to lump him in with, you know, these guys. I'm going to put him as moderately evil. If he was alive for longer, he probably would have gone fully evil. But thankfully, he died of a heart attack. This next guy has a really cool nickname, Silent Cal. His policies, we can, lo we can look up, we can have a discussion about, but he didn't talk very much. And he chose not to run again in 1928. Oh, but he served 10 years because Harding died. So he was from New England, governor of Massachusetts. Stalwart support of racial equality during a period of high racial tension. Not bad. You know what? I would have grabbed a beer with Silent Cal. I, I would do that. And, and the 20s were great. The 20s were great. He was president during the 20s. 20s were great. Besides, like, the mafia, the 20s were great. The 30s, on the other hand, pet hippo, uh, were not great. And that was Herbert Hoover. Thank you, Herbert Hoover, for everything that happened in that era. We need someone great to bring us out. A guy I want to bat grab a beer with, the longest serving president, who led us through a very bloody, horrible war, had some very great quotes along the way. He definitely belongs in the beer tier. But he died. Oh, but the camps, the camps were bad. I'm going to, the camps were very not good. But he had a very long presidency. A lot of things happened. In any, in a, for a two-term president, the camps would be disqualifying. But they, he just did so many things that could have gone so wrong if any of these other guys were in power. Imagine if Millard Fillmore had to lead us to, uh, towards, through World War II. Actually, you know what? I'll put this to a poll. What tier does FBR belong in? All right. Let's see what the viewers think. Truman desegregated the military. I'll get to Truman because he did a bad thing. And you know what it is. You know what it's going to be. So far it's split 50-50 through 12 votes. There's six votes for each side. I'll give this another minute because right now it's split 50-50. Oh, 57-50 for beer tier. 21 votes in. How many people are on this? I can expect uh, 33. Supported eugenics. Oh, I'll give it 30 more seconds. Fifty-nine percent yes so far. All right. 
through 22 votes. Here are the final results. He stays a beard here. Eugenics is bad. Do I veto this? All right, let's see how how hard he supported eugenics. This will depend on, on if I veto the vote or not. Eugenics is not mentioned in Wikipedia, but that's liberal propaganda. Undesirable traits, bold words from a disabled gentleman. The feeble-minded. I don't really like this guy anymore. Oh, he didn't like Jewish people. Okay, I'm gonna move him down. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm vetoing that vote. It was, it was rigged. Uh, check the polling boxes. Truman is also moderately evil. He uh, he did a bad thing that I'm sure you know what it is. But after that is Eisenhower. And for a Republican, I sure do want to grab a beer with him. A great general. He was the guy who really led us through World War II, not really FDR. Oh, he did turn away that. Yeah, FDR, now that I remember all the things he did to my people specifically uh it was not great so we got eisenhower let's go through to oh kennedy oh kennedy jfk i'm sure this is the one you've been waiting for hold on i'm getting a call here discuss in the chat what uh jfk deserves hello Okay, we're back, guys. Let's see what you said in chat. Oh, RFK is better. JFK gets a beer. Bay of Pigs was bad. Well-meaning but bad policies. All right. He did do a lot of things that were probably be frowned upon by God. So we're going to put him in the moderately evil tier. Uh, and the moderately evil tier is filling up fast. <gasps> and then we get LBJ. LBJ had a name... For his penis. I would like to grab a beer with him because of that. Also, uh, while JFK like ran on civil rights in the moon, J LBJ actually did civil rights and the moon and Vietnam. Oh, that uh, Vietnam. Uh, none of these guys can just be good, can they? All right. Vietnam was bad. But. I still want to grab a beer with him. The Civil Rights Act was great. LBJ was not cool because of war crimes. All right, okay. Another vote, another vote. I may or may not honor the results of this vote. Does he go in beer or moderately evil? Mass napalm of Laos. Oh boy. 
Okay, vote. Use your vo voting is your voice. Do 15 votes are pretty evenly split. How many votes can I expect? Uh, Agent Orange. <laughs> it would be fun to have beer, but he's also evil. <laughs> oh, God. Children of Vietnam, Souls Chemical. So far, beer has 59% of the votes through 17. I want to get up to over 20 votes. I'm going to wait for that. My Lie Massacre. I mean, he's in hell. Like, he's already in hell, but do I want to grab a beer with him? I don't know if he's evil. All right, through 18 votes, beer is up 61%. Beer has 61%, evil has 39 and we have another vote for beer that just came in. One more vote. All right. It looks like this isn't going to be swayed. He stays in beer. That's the will of the people. All right. And then America gets way worse because Nixon. I don't think that needs to be explained. But here we go. Gerald Ford, he parted Nixon as his first act. He should not have been president by any means. Definitely no. He should not have been anywhere near the presidency. Um, but he was a great baseball and football player, a two-sport athlete. Uh, he was on SNL and did an impression of Chevy Chase's impression of him. like a beer with him he, he, he should not have been president but maybe that's that what that's what makes him a little better than the others that's why uh garfield is on this tier he never wanted to be president so congratulations gerald ford okay the modern era carter beer i don't care what any of you say i like carter i sure iran whatever but like Looking back on it, I mean, he's still alive. You could do this right now. I could go down to Georgia and, you know, crack one open with him today. I think that's worth something. Speaking of people who are not alive and very dead and in hell, uh, Reagan. This is going to get political. Yes, this is the point where it no longer gets uh, <laughs> historical and gets now political. I'm putting Reagan in hell tier because he was not great to gay people, to uh, people of color who he, you know, put crack in their neighborhoods and any number of other horrible things. He was not great to people who didn't support him. Uh, he, he was a big, very charismatic guy, but that doesn't help you much in hell, unfortunately. How about George Bush, though? Led the Yale baseball team to a college World Series. But he was a World War II fighter pilot. I'm not putting him in beer tier, though, because he's an excessively boring person. I, I don't want to grab a, a beer with him at all. Maybe lump him in the same group as John Adams and John Quincy Adams. I don't, I don't want that. Both Bushes are horrible people. Where's James Dean? Is that a reference to Monument Mythos? Are you a Wendigoon? Charlie Ritchie, are you a Wendigoon fan? James Dean would have his own tier, probably. Bill Clinton. All right. Here we go. People who are alive, they are not yet in any part of hell. Um, but one day, they will be. So... I think Bill Clinton belongs in the same tier as JFK. <laughs> Just. Okay. That <laughs> saxophone, great saxophone player. That brings us to George 
Walker Bush. Uh, the W stands for winner, which he did illegitimately in 2000 and somehow again in 2004 because of 9-11. He brought us into Afghanistan. He brought us into Iraq. He, you know, the, the harm that he's done is much more visible today. And one day he will get what he deserves. So he is next in the horrible person tier. All right, Obama. Now, you might not know this, but if you ask someone from a foreign country what their favorite president is, they'll, they, it's a high chance they'll say Obama. He's one of the most popular American presidents overseas and in America, too. He might not even make it to hell. He did some war crimes in various countries. The Caduce Hospital bombing is one of many. But I, I like a beer with him right now. I, I would like it right now. Obamana, Obama prison, Obunga. And that leaves Donald Trump. I still have uh, uh, many things to say about this man and his presidency. We're still seeing the effects of the the damage that he wrought to America. And surely no election will ever play out the same way again. I mean, even midterms, you're going to have people, you know, protesting results because of him. Uh, watch the January 6th hearings if you aren't al already. I wish I could put him in the, in the Andrew Jackson tier. Wish I could put him in the horrible slave owner here. You know he was a frequent flyer of Epstein Island. But he's a, he's a horrible person because Andrew Jackson was even worse because he served more terms. And as for Joe Biden, we don't know yet. His presidency isn't over. Uh, he might, you know, get another term and do something terrible. He might uh, end up doing some good. In any case, Donald Trump was the only president uh, to feature as a wrestler in WWE. Um, so this is our tier list screenshot it now for, if you want to, for some reason, keep it for posterity. Thank you so much for watching this stream. Uh, I'm going to end it before the flame war begins. we got a lot of concurrent viewers in this stream. Uh, thank you all for watching a recording of this should be up on the channel later. I've been Joey. Bye.